going on guys? Luke here with Wilson Auto Detailing. Listen, the other day I read this comment below a video asking about when customers want a discount and how to deal with it being on one car or even just multiple vehicles. And if you're starting in your detailing business, you're probably getting some phone calls like this. Hey Luke, listen, I want my wife and my car done. She's got an SUV and I've got a truck and I just figured if you're doing two vehicles in one day, is there any sort of discount that you can give us? Or phone calls like this. Hey Luke, I've had a detailer come to my house the past two years, but he bailed on me now because he's getting too much business. And I know that you said you charged $250, but he only charged me $50 for the past two years to do my detail. So I don't understand why you're charging a full $200 more than the other guy. And you know, in the detailing world, there's actually a term for customers who are always trying to get a discount and negotiate with you. It's called getting Ramseyed. You know, like Dave Ramsey, don't pay full price for anything under any circumstances ever? Well, while trying to get a discounted price on everything in order to save more than you earn is actually good advice for the other person on the phone, it is not helpful for the detailer and it is also difficult to deal with in the beginning stages of your business because you don't yet have an established reputation, you don't yet have an established list of maintenance clients who pay you on a regular basis, so you feel obligated to say yes because you need income coming in, but you can't work for free. So how do you overcome these objections that customers will inevitably start throwing at you over the phone. Listen, the one secret to getting around your customer negotiating with you on price is simply by asking them to hit the like button. And your customer is going to have no idea what you're talking about because they're not watching a YouTube video and there is no like button to hit. And when you say that, they might respond with something like, Luke, I don't have any idea what you mean hitting the like button. There is no like button to hit. I don't even understand how that's a proper response to the question I just asked you. To which you can respond and simply tell them very logically that as you get more likes on this video, other detailers are actually going to have a greater opportunity to see the information in this video or all also struggling with customers who are negotiating with them on price and they need this information. So hitting the like button is actually going to be the most generous thing you can do today because other detailers other than yourself will also get the same help that you need in the same way. In fact, I'm going to go online right now to this video and hit the like button as I'm talking to you guys. All right, now that we've done that, let's get into the video. Now I know you guys are thinking, Luke, why are you copying Graham Stephan asking people to like the like button or hit the like button or obliterate the like button? And my simple answer to that is, well, I like the way the guy gets creative. So here we are implementing it in the detailing world. Now, what you guys are looking at is the interior pet hair infestation on the inside of this Mazda little small SUV. The reason this is so relevant to what we're talking about here is because you've probably noticed in your professional detailing business, especially as you're starting, that there tends to be a correlation between the people with horrible vehicles and people who ask for discounts or a hint at the the fact that they deserve a discount because of X, Y, and Z. And the really maddening part about this is that many times customers with pet hair like this or other interior conditions that totally suck are the ones saying they want a discount because they just want you to focus on the one particular area that's disgusting. And they don't understand the full nature of the beast when it comes to detailing that you cannot just focus on this one area and get this one thing done in order to achieve the visual and cleanliness aspect or appeal that they want. And in their lack of understanding of the full nature of the beast, they ask questions like, can I have a discount or can you charge me X, Y, and Z less than what you charge on your website? Because I really don't want that. I just want you to take care of, for example, the pet hair on the interior of my car. Now, I want to give you guys basically what I think is the most important and kind of priority first step when somebody starts this conversation on the phone with you about getting a discount. One of the easiest ways to approach this in order to help your customer kind of cross over the bridge is simply by providing context. What do I mean by that? Well, when a customer on the other end of the phone asks something like, can I have a discount for this reason, this reason, and this reason, one of the easiest things to do is simply say, do you mind if I explain just a little bit the process that's going to take place in order to achieve the results that we want on the interior of this vehicle? They're 99.9% .9 of the time going to say, yeah, no problem. What are you thinking? And when they give you permission to dive into that a little bit, it is the perfect time to essentially explain the nature of the beast. So I want to explain to you exactly how I would do it just in this particular example. And this particular customer said, hey, Luke, really, I don't want to be charged full price. I'm really just concerned about the pet hair, not really anything else in the car. If you want to shampoo it here and there, that's totally fine. But really, the pet hair is what bothers me. I might respond with something like this. 
Customer A, I totally understand what you're saying because the pet hair can be the thing that really catches your eye in the car and it kind of feels like the biggest problem. And while that may be true, there's going to be some other necessary steps that I'm going to have to do in order to, number one, get the pet hair up fully in a way that actually makes you happy with the job that you paid for, but also just to make sure that the carpets underneath all that pet hair are in the condition you want them to be in. So I want to give you just a couple of options based on what I think are going to be best for you. Number one, we could boil this detail down to something as simple as just vacuuming up the pet hair and doing nothing else, or something a little more complicated, but still very simple, vacuuming up the pet hair, making sure we take care of it on all of the carpet and the leather seats, then treating the leather seats as well as the carpets with not only some carpet shampoo, but also protectant. In many ways, this is what I think is best simply because there's probably going to be some staining, there's probably going to be some dirt, grease, and grime that you're not aware of underneath the floorboards, on the leather seats that really just haven't caught your eye because the pet hair is so all-consuming. And when we pull that pet hair up, you're going to notice those imperfections and wonder why they're still there. But if we agree just to vacuum, those are not going to be taken care of. So customer, I just tell you these things because I want to make sure you understand the full nature of the beast of what you're getting into here, just because I see jobs like this all the time. And I want to make sure I give you and deliver on exactly what you're paying for and exactly what you want. That conversation can be so simple and yet so effective because the customer, number one, sees you as somebody who wants to give them the best. You have their interest in mind. And in addition to that, you're giving them context, which immediately brings them off of this, I want a discount mountain because they see a fuller picture than what they saw before. We overcomplicate this all the time in the detailing world because we're wondering how to communicate with people who are insistent on wanting a discount. But it truly can be as simple as step one, give more context. Step two, ask the customer the simple question of, does this make sense to you? It is a double-edged sword because you're not only bringing them down the mountain because you're giving them context at what this is going to take and why the discount isn't going to work because of the work that goes into it. But in doing that, you automatically communicate a certain level of trust because you're giving them a deep explanation. They trust you. They like you. They appreciate the fact that you did it, and that is going to create the win-win. All right, guys, that brings us to the end of this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. And while we didn't talk about it, if you're interested in the tools and products that you saw being used in this video but not talked about, all of those tools and products will be linked up in the YouTube description box below, as well as my free guide to starting your auto detailing business for under $500, where I lay out the top 10 list of tools and products you need in order to get involved in the detailing business. So you don't have to waste time and money on stuff that's going to sit and collect dust in your garage. If you guys like auto detailing business content, or if you are a professional auto detailer, or make sure to hit the subscribe button because I release videos every week on exactly that, the business side of auto detailing. In addition to that, I post videos every day on Instagram, so make sure you're following the content there if you're interested in more. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching, and as always from Luke here at Wilson Auto Detailing, keep working hard, and I will see you guys in the next video.